welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Slaughtered Lamb English Bitter. All right. Today we have another fan request. Matthew Davey would like us to cover The Thing with Two Heads from 1972. It is written and directed by Lee Frost, and he's kind of an exploitation type director. <laughs> he started off with sexploitation and then moved on to black exploitation. Ray Milland is in this. He's a Hollywood legend, really. He's been in a million things, but just a few are going to mention. Frogs, The Terror in the Wax Museum, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes. Rosie Greer's in this, the brother of famous Pam Greer. He was also in lots of TV shows, to name one, Macmillan and Wife. <laughs> <laughs> I like McMillan and wife. He was also a pro <laughs> football player. Yeah. And a bodyguard for Robert F. Kennedy. Don Marshall is in this too, and he was in the original Star Trek episode, The Galileo 7. The thing with two heads starts off with one of our main characters here, Dr. Maxwell Kirshner, going down to like the secret lab he has in the basement <laughs> to, to check on his experiment. And we find out that his experiment is this gorilla with two heads. We find out he's doing this experiment because he is actually planning to do this to a human at some point. Himself. He is dying and he wants to put his genius brain head on a healthy donor body. He's doing it first with the gorilla to make sure it can work and so far the second head is taken. Now the next part of the experiment is to get the old head off. <laughs> the original head? <laughs> yeah. While well, transporting the gorilla in this cheap cage, it's just sitting on top of a bed. Yeah. It gets out and runs amok and starts trashing the lab, running down the street, goes to this convenience store. <laughs> <laughs> when he's on that brick wall, tell the guy in the suit is all trying to balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the doctors tracks down the gorilla and shoots him with a tranquilizer, <laughs> takes him back. Kirshner is also the head of surgery in this hospital, and he's hired a, a brand new brilliant surgeon, and he's meeting him for the first time. <laughs> he walks in, and you can tell Kirshner's not too happy, because he's super racist. Unknowingly, he hired a black surgeon, and your services are no longer needed. Yeah. Dr. Williams calls him out on it. He's like, well, because I'm black, right? After Dr. Williams leaves, he gives his staff kind of shit for hiring this guy. Kirshner is successful in removing the old head from the gorilla. So now the gorilla has a brand new head living properly. So now he's ready to do this experiment to himself. But he needs a donor body. And he's running out of time to find one because he's dying and he actually takes ill sooner than expected. It turns out that nobody can seem to find a proper donor in the amount of time that Kirshner has left. Scour the prison system and ask death row inmates to volunteer their bodies for scientific research. One guy volunteers. I told you before, I'm an innocent man. 30 days that the experiment's gonna take is just the time I need to prove my innocence. He steps out of the car and the doctors look at each other like, Oh no, this is gonna be trouble. Jack Moss is the poor bastard who's <laughs> volunteered here. When he wakes up, he's got Kirstner's head on him and he starts freaking out. He's like, hey, what'd you guys do to me? I didn't sign on for this. I told you guys I'm an innocent man. <laughs> and then Kirstner wakes up. You gotta be joking. <laughs> See, the irony of the yeah. whole thing. He gets up and he starts to run amok too, just like that gorilla did, right? He starts freaking out. Takes off and he ends up taking Dr. Williams hostage. There's this big long chase scene that ensues where they're trying to evade the cop cars. They also come across this uh, big race going on with dirt bikes. One of the guys on the dirt bike sees Moss with the, the second head and wipes out. And so they take the, the dirt bike and they take off and they're just getting up over a hill and almost away and then you see the dirt bike come back and there's like tons of cop cars <laughs> coming after them. There's like this big chase driving into these canyons. Yeah, like where are these all these canyons and big huge holes in the ground just out of nowhere just for no reason. You see these cars driving into these <laughs> holes. And there's like these ramps that are perfect for the dirt bike to go over to. So they end up getting away they get to Jack Moss's girlfriend's house to prove Jack's innocence. And that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see what happens with Jack Moss with the head, Williams, 
And all the cops and the whole cast and crew keep watching The Thing with Two Heads. So, The Thing with Two Heads, is it trash or treasure? Mm. Let's start with the treasure first. The plot itself, right? The way that they tackle the racist issues of the day, right? By melding it with a comedy. They put an old cantankerous bastard's <laughs> head, who and he happens to be white, onto this sort of young black guy, right? Yeah. And then you've got, he's rich, this black guy's been imprisoned unlawfully, yeah. he's, he's innocent. A whole mishmash of what's going on at the time. Yeah. The fact that they're able to do it comedically while still saying something, pretty brilliant how they do it. Yeah, it brings it to the forefront, right, without really thinking cramming it down your throat, actually. Right. The characters in this movie are fantastic. You know, we first meet Kirshner, he's this old man who's racist and grumpy, but he yeah. thinks the world of himself plays it perfectly. You yeah. just love to hate him. Rosie Greer is really good in this, yeah. and it's funny because he's kind of not good, really. Yeah. <laughs> but it's sort of like a yin and yang thing. They, they play well off of each other. The effects are good, too. And they're so simple. Ray Milan's behind yeah, Rosie just, Greer. Just always behind him. Like. <laughs> yeah, they got that big thing, yeah. that pillow thing around, <laughs> so it hides everything. Thing. And then when they show him from far away, and it's some super dummy yeah. head. Yeah, <laughs> bouncing around. <laughs> but He's on that motorcycle. Yeah, that yeah and the, the head. head's all bouncing. Each actor has a fake head, depending on which head is talking, yeah. right? During the surgery there, like when they're laying on the slab, it looks pretty oh, good. Oh yeah, the yeah. way they do that, yeah. where, they, where they actually take the heads off. Yeah. And I thought, I was really watching intently, and I was like, is that fake? That's a fake head. That's a fake head. I see something moving. They must have animatronics yeah. or something. The name sounds deceiving. The thing with two heads. You, I thought for sure it was going to be like a 50s B Roger Corman monster movie. Mm -hmm. and not at all. It's this a legit comedy. And the comedy is legitimately funny. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's written very well. The jokes land. The whole movie is one big joke. Just the image of... The thing with two heads <laughs> is enough to get you, like, it's just, the, the image is so ridiculous, you can't help but laugh at it. Right? Yeah, yeah. The dialogue for the characters, the way it's written is great, too. Like, when they walk into his girlfriend's house there, and she's like, you get into all kinds of shit. Like, <laughs> he shows up with an extra head. It's like, she's not even phased by that. It's like, what the hell has he done to desensitize you from shit? Yeah. And then he walks in with an extra head. It's like, oh yeah, that's normal. Yeah. <laughs> wants to get with his girlfriend there and of course she doesn't want to because he's got this old man's head on his shoulders and he turns to the Kirshner and goes now you know you got to go yeah. <laughs> like he didn't need to go before but, but now that he can't get laid he needs to go even yeah. more the whole chase scene is pretty funny too like mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of the Blues Brothers chase scene where it's just so epic and ridiculous where it becomes funny like right. how many more cop cars are gonna drive into that canyon yeah. for no reason <laughs> which brings us to the trash of this movie and, and that is part of it is the pacing it takes a long time for the thing with two heads to actually break out of the lab and start wreaking havoc and mm. on the loose <laughs> yeah he's still on the loose and the chase scene too is a little too long like it's ridiculously long where mm. it's like Okay, let's wrap it yeah. up here, you know. <laughs> it's like a quarter of the movie. <laughs> this yeah, chase super scene. long. And it's entertaining and all, but it goes a tad too long. They probably could have shaved five, ten minutes off. Oh, probably, of yeah. Scene. Easily. The settings, too, for this movie are pretty bare bones to the point of actually being shitty. Yeah. Like that basement laboratory in the mansion. It doesn't really make sense in the context of the movie. Like, here's this rich surgeon that lives in a mansion. Yeah. That's the best laboratory you can get? It's, it's <laughs> like, well, you couldn't afford some equipment? Like, it's just a basement with a yeah. cage in it and a couple of beakers and shit. Yeah. Like, you still just... see the washing machine in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> still coming down and still do his laundry? Of like, course, all the big, you know, all the big equipment, the, the Frankenstein-type mm -hmm. laboratory is kind of what this movie needed. Another piece of trash is the ending, and kind of how abrupt the ending happens. It's just yeah. suddenly, they just wrapped it up really quick, and you're like, well, where's the payoff? There isn't really much of a payoff in this movie. It's just kind of over, and you're like, 
Well, that was good and all, but yeah, you're it, left uh, wanting uh, more. You want a little bit more, right? Yeah, a little more closure would have yeah. been nice. Yeah, if they would have shaved like some time off that chase scene and used some of that time to pop on the end to extend the ending a little bit more, you feel more fulfilled at the end of it. Exactly, right? yeah. Who can watch a movie like this without mentioning the fact that The Simpsons parodied this in their Treehouse of Horrors episode? Burns transplants Homer's brain into that, <laughs> that machine. Yeah. Look at me, I'm Davy Crockett! <laughs> Then the machine falls on Burns and he has to get his head transplanted onto Homer's body. I had never seen this movie until the other day, and when I watched it, I was like, holy fuck, that's what they're parodying! This yeah. movie! How many times you could watch The Simpsons and not even realize you're watching something that's a complete parody of something that you've never seen? Yeah. And then when you finally see that thing, it's like, ah! <laughs> Yep. I had they, no clue. They did it again. Yep. yep. The thing with two heads, trash or treasure? <laughs> it's treasure. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a really fucking good movie. Yeah, it is. For like a kind of a low budget B movie, gets a lot done, man. Yeah, it, it delivers a yeah, lot, right? It, it tackles serious subject matter without being too serious about it. It keeps it fun and funny. The movie's entertaining as hell. Like, you're smiling almost the whole way through because it's just <laughs> so ridiculous and fun. Yeah, and until next time, keep drinking.